All right, so it's pretty easy to get lost in this stuff. So let me try and do some stuff to make this more readable. So one thing that's going to happen is I'm going to have a number of different rotation codes that are going to be similar, but it's going to be hard to keep track of all these braces going back and forth. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a script, which I'm going to call, let's see, rotate line maybe. And I'm going to take everything in this global shape equals one, making sure I have the matching braces. And I'm going to copy and paste it into this rotate line so that I don't have to worry about uh, making sure that the braces match up in my entire block of code. So what I'm going to do then is call rotate line in here. So my rotate clockwise is just going to be which shape is it, call the corresponding method. And then rotate line is going to have this particular code in here. This will make it so that my braces are match up a little more easily. The other thing is that these shapes, numbers, are kind of arbitrary. It may be kind of hard to remember, like, what is 3? Is that a T block again? Was that an L? I forget. And they don't mean anything, really, other than just keeping track of which code is which. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make something called a constant to keep track of that, something a little more descriptive than zero. So to do that, under resources, the menu up here, there's something called define constants. Looks like a little c. All this is is it's a table where you give it some name and some value it represents. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a very it's kind of like a variable called square, which is going to be 0. I'm going to use all caps so that I know that's a constant rather than some other variable. I'm going to create one called line, which is a 1. I'm going to one that's a t called 2. That's probably L, I think. Reverse L. Maybe I should put in an underscore. Uh, I'm going to call that a Z. And that one will be an S. So just some names that may remind you of which shape is which. So really, when I say square, it really means 0. So it has the same value. However, when I'm actually looking at my code, it's a little more descriptive to say if global shape is square, if global.shape is line. Really, that's 0 and 1, but when I'm looking through my code, it's much faster to read that and understand what's going on. So I'm going to say if it's the square, do this. If it's the line, do this. And in create shape, I'm actually going to do the same thing. Just because this way, it will be self-evident from my code which each of these things are. The computer doesn't care one way or another. This is so that my brain doesn't go crazy. That looks so much better to me. All right. And why not? I'll do that for testing purposes, too. Now, what about the T-shaped block? So the line only has two rotations, but the T's got four. How am I going to do that? So it's actually going to be similar to rotate line. It's just that I'm going to be moving three different blocks. I'm actually going to duplicate this guy. So if you right-click on rotate line and duplicate, it just copies all the code over in a new section. This will be rotate T. And I'm going to call this method in my rotate clockwise. 
if global dot shape is the T, and I don't really need those comments anymore, then I'm going to call rotate T. So this is breaking up the code into more manageable pieces instead of having one gargantuan uh, file. All right, so rotating the T block. So block one, in my code, they go one, two, three across, and then the fourth one is down below the two. So I'm going to be moving one, three, and four. One is going to move down and right, so plus 32, plus 32. The three block is going to move left and up, so minus and minus. And my four block is going to move right and up, so plus 32 and minus 32. Go back over there. Okay. So one's moving right and down, right, down, right and down. So make sure that the checks also match where you're moving the blocks to. Block three is moving left and up, minus and minus, minus, minus. Block four is moving right and up, plus, minus, plus, minus. Okay. This is no longer true about horizontal and vertical. Rotation 1 is not going to go back to 0 anymore. I'm going to have to have a second one, and then a third one, and then that's going to go back to 0. So before I do anything else, I'm going to check this first rotation to make sure that works. So in create shape, I'm going to go back and make sure that this is giving me a T block, so I don't have to randomly hope for one. OK, that part's working. And the next part is not, obviously. All right, so now from this one, one is going to go right and up. So that'll be plus and minus, plus and minus. Three is going to go left and down, minus and plus, minus and plus. Four is going to go up which is minus 32, and it's going to go left, which is also minus 32. If you can't see this, grab a piece of paper, draw it out. All right, so I've got two of them down. Now I need the third one. So I'm just going to copy that block of code for the second one. So if rotation is 2, it's going to turn into 3. All right. This one needs to go left and up, left, up. 3 needs to go right and down. That's plus and plus. Let's see. 4 needs to go left and down, minus and plus. Outstanding. Can you tell I've done this before? So three is actually going to go back to your zero rotation. And one thing I got to be careful of is making sure that all of the blocks end up exactly as they were when I first created it. So one needs to end up in exactly the same place as its creation. So in mine, one's got to be on the left of two, three's got to be to the right of two, four's got to be below two. So it does matter that they all get back to the same position. Otherwise, when you do the rotation again, your blocks will be out of place. So I got to be careful about that. So one is going left and down, minus and plus. Block three, where are you going? You are going, let's see, to the right and up. Plus, minus, 
plus minus 4 is going right and down, plus and plus. We. What I would do is I would check to make sure that the very first rotation gets everything where it's supposed to go before you do any of the others. So make sure rotation 0 to 1 works. Once you are sure that is working, then try and go on to the next rotation and make sure that that works before you go on to the one after that. Because we want to make sure that none of your other code is messing you up. The smaller the piece of code you can test, the easier it is to find out where the bugs are. By the way, the other thing I should do real quick is make sure that this doesn't rotate into the wall. That's good. All right. Do you rotate into the wall? No. OK, good. All right. That's saved in Tetris Demo 2. All of the rest of the rotations are for you to do. Good luck. <laughs>